Hey, hello. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, everyone. All right, I think we can get started with like quick intros. And as people join, then we can actually um, ask them to introduce themselves. So let's kick it off with D Danielle Cook. Yeah, Just... I'm here, um, Danielle Cook. I am part of a CNCF Cartographers Working Group that worked on the Cloud Native Maturity Model, Simon's on the agenda. Uh, to give an update on that. So that's why I'm here. Awesome. Welcome. Thanks. Yep. Myself, I'm Ricardo, um, one of the working group leads. I'm um, also a Tack on Time co chair. I've been attending these meetings for a few months already. So yeah, I'm happy to be here. VJ. Uh, hey. Uh, okay. I was checking if I was on mute. Uh, uh, I work in Microsoft on Azure Kubernetes Service and uh, doing this as a personal hobby. I've been here for a couple of months. Awesome. Welcome, uh, Claudia. Welcome back. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Um, Claudia Misale from IBM Research. Um, I do Kubernetes and observability for uh, large language model training. Great. Great to see you back. And yeah. And yeah. Uh, piece of fuel. Yeah. You know how it goes. I know. Yeah. yeah. Rajas. Good to see you. Hi, everyone. Yeah, nice to see everyone. Uh, I am uh, one of the tech leads for the CNCF tag runtime. Uh, been active in this working group. But, uh, yeah. Just happy to collaborate with everyone and see all the cool things that are happening over here. And they'll be talking about the OPEA a little bit later. Thanks. Yeah. So I, I, a couple of folks from OPEA had reached out. So I've added to the agenda. Perfect. Uh, Simon Forster, welcome. Yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm like Danielle. I'm Simon Forster from the Cartographers Working Group. Uh, and uh, yeah, thank you. Welcome. Adele, oh, oh sorry, Adele. <laughs> uh, hey everyone, uh, I'm Adel Zaluk, and I've been around for you know uh, since probably the start of this uh, working group. I'm also recently one of the tech leads of the working group. Um, I work my day job is in Red Hat. I work as a product manager, also collaborating on other initiatives within the CNCF. So happy to be here and happy to collaborate with all of you. Welcome. Or happy to see you again, uh, John Gardner. Hey, how's it going? Uh, this is my first meeting here. Um, I helped out with the, uh, or I was involved in the tag app delivery group in the CNCF uh, uh, Cloud Maturity white paper. Um, so figured I would come over here and uh, see if there's something I can do to help out and contribute. 
uh, day job is a uh, senior software engineer at Crumware and also founder of Ardea, which is more focused on AI and machine learning. That's great. Good to have you here. Thanks. Yeah, Andrew Aikawa? Yeah. Um, hey, so I've been coming here for like a month now. Um, yeah, just here to learn how to like contribute. Um, this is kind of like a hobby for me. Um, day job, uh, ML platform engineer for the startup I'm working for. Um, yeah, interested on how to like deploy Kubernetes uh, at scale for training. Great. Good to see you back. Thanks. Uh, and Victor? Yeah, Victor Lu, uh, independent. All right. Thank you. Good. Uh, Nikolai? Uh, hey, I'm Nikolai. I am with Isovalent and now with Cisco already. Uh, visiting here from time to time, not necessarily directly connected with my uh, daily job uh, as an engineering manager, but uh, who knows? Maybe there will be some interesting things to collaborate. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Thanks for joining. Uh, anybody else? So, uh, Andre from just join. Yeah, I just joined Hivox. Uh, I'm Andre from Apple. Um, I've been involved in this community for a while. Uh, I'm part of the Qflow community. I've been there for the six years. Right now, I'm the, in the steering committee, maintaining um, the whole ecosystem of multiple projects. Thanks. Joel? Joel? He's, he's still trying to connect, but... All right, I think uh, anybody else? So uh, I think he uh, needs to go. I think I got everybody. Uh, right, so let's let's get started. So that was already like five minutes. Uh, um, so the first item I have it on the agenda, and feel free to interrupt me anytime, uh, any questions. So I, so we've been actually working together with the Gen AI Commons from the LF AI and Data, and we're actually putting this list together of all the different models that are in open source. Um, so um, you'd like to invite everybody on the call to uh, contribute. Basically, uh, if you have any information about these, feel free to fill it out. You can also chat on the Generative AI Commons Slack channel on the Linux Foundation, Linux Foundation AI and Data Slack. Uh, so if you have any Anything that you want to bring up, you can free, feel free to bring that that up over there. Uh, so yeah, so there's there's pre-trained LLMs, there's text and image. So you see, there's a lot of uh, information that is missing. And the reason they want to do this is is to pre-populate a list of models so they can, uh, or I guess pre-populate the 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 model openness framework that they've been working on and populate the models in, in, in some sort of a tool that, that shows uh, how these models are complying or or following this this framework. If, if you're not familiar with that, there's a paper uh, op openness model, sorry, op model openness framework. Yeah, so there's a paper here. So just go ahead and read about it. And, and it's just basically uh, different aspects of a machine learning model that uh, constitutes uh, a you know, place where you can determine whether that model is uh, open source. Uh, so you can maybe take a look here. So that just to give you some examples. So data, like all these aspects, like data set, data pre-processing code, uh, model metadata. So are all of these open source or not open source or, or you know, and, and so the idea is just that having all these aspects in a specific license and, and uh, definition of open source will constitute like what it is, uh, what, what an open, uh, open source model is. Does anybody have any questions or comments about this? I'd say this is useful because um, you know within the cloud native bubble, uh, I think I think it is important to uh, look at the licenses uh, for the models that we potentially might be using for the cloud native tooling in general, like AI for cloud native. 
but also, you know, considering how this aligned in general with the landscape. So I guess this is, I would say, important metadata for the cloud native community to 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 have. Yep. And yeah, there's there's tons of them. So yeah, I mean, I, and, uh, I know it's kind of hard to keep track of, of them because every week there's like a new model and and there's also a lot of PR around that specific model being like faster or better than the previous model. So the, the space is actually moving pretty fast. Any any other comments before we move on to the next item? All right. So in terms of the landscape, uh, the Cloud Native AI landscape, uh, a brief update, uh, we're go going to create a PR uh, so, so that it actually gets published. Uh, so we, we're working uh, with the LF AI and data too. And so we're trying to figure out uh, where the, the landscape fits with respect to, to, to their landscape. So they also have a landscape. Uh, and, um, and then so what we want to do is make uh, this more of a cloud native landscape, so the ecosystem with AI and cloud native. And I think the one of the differences here is that LF AI and data has projects that help help you create AI and models. Uh, but I think in terms of cloud native uh, AI landscape, it will be more like how you run uh, AI, how, how you run all these different type of AI work workloads. Uh, so this is like a, a preview of the landscape with all the different projects. So once we get it in, I think anybody can just uh, publicly create a PR and add different things, you know, add a logo, fix a logo, or add a new project. Uh, but they, we're trying to keep it, um, you know, uh, just to open source projects at, at the moment. Any any comments about this landscape? Or? Um, are we doing anything as far as like looking into and aggregating a list of uh, different uh, hardware technologies that these are running on uh meaning like uh gpus and nvidia yeah 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 um well right now it's just uh on, on top of uh software it's like a open source software but then you know i think we could potentially add another cat category here as like hardware or something but you know we're open to suggestions so yeah I, i'd add that so the hardware i think falls down to you know, kernel and below, um, and the runtimes. So while there are certain uh, schedulers and runtimes that are serving for or addressing cloud native deployments and so on, I guess. So there, there's also the Linux um, foundation landscape, which covers not just the platform layer above and you know orchestration and cube and whatnot. There's also the uh lower layers you know uh, well what happens in the hardware and then so this is more i would say a superset the cloud native landscape is more of a subset but if we see that there is that strong type coupling between both um and there's a there's a chance you know we potentially might add that but i, I see this layer more at, above uh the layer that we operate on yeah. You gotcha. Yeah, that makes sense. And yeah, that's uh, what's being shown here is kind of what I was uh, getting at, like, you know, having AWS bedrock and the different architectures and stuff. But yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so if you read the Cloud Native AI white paper, we have this diagram. And so we have this at the low level. But I know there, there there's really specific stuff there, like the specific uh, NVIDIA GPUs and the H100s and whatnot, right? So, I mean, we, we're kind of open to that too as well, so. But any, any comments on this besides uh, adults uh, coming? Hey, I don't, I don't have an answer there, but I think that's an area where if you have a requirement to go to a specific uh, hardware component, you can color that or nail that down like in Kubernetes. Those are areas that we could uh, uh, further investigate, like whether it be a reference architecture or addition mm -hmm. to the landscape, et cetera. That, that general area of 
how do you tie the uh, the the workload and you know that type of thing into the actual infrastructure and hardware makes sense yeah so yeah i mean we could add another feel here that says something about related hardware too so that's another option but but yeah we're open i think cool all right so I think that's any any other comments about the landscape, anything that you'd like to see that you like to change that you think how it's different from the LF AI and data landscape. Um, yeah, anything related to that before we move on. All right, cool. Uh, so we got Simon and he wanted to talk about the AI updates on the cloud native maturity model. So Simon, do you wanna? Yeah, thank, thank you uh, very much. So um, along with Danielle, who's also joined us today, we're co-chairs of the Cartographers Working Group. Uh, we're both CNCF ambassadors. The maturity model has been around for a number of years within the CNCF. And uh, it um, uh, we feel that it's time to start integrating into this some elements of the of the work that you're doing within the AI working group and within the AI community and in the CNCF. We um, uh, we would like to we're really here today to introduce ourselves, um, and uh, the maturity model deals with key areas as you're showing there of people, process, policy, and technology, and has five, five levels for maturity. Um, a um, Artificial intelligence clearly touches on, on all of these areas. Um, one thing that the, that the maturity model does in some respects is chart a, a path uh, for evolution and, um, and considerations for earlier on in the journey as well. Um, so what we would, would really love to do is ensure that um, we um, accurately reflect the work that's going on within um, this working group and the, and the wider AI community within the CNCF. Um, in terms of a um, how that might work, some thoughts might be um, as we update content, this is all uh, managed through GitHub, uh, we can potentially ask for review or alternatively, you know, um, work with you to um, to actually draft some of that content. Perhaps um, as a sort of an initial proposal, um, what we, we can do is, is perhaps draft some initial content, but that was really just to, to introduce ourselves. We'd like to make sure that we accurately reflect what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Uh, yeah, I think uh, one of the things that we've been talking a lot about is this um, uh, ML life cycle. Right. So I think uh, that we could probably fit that maturity, you know, model yep. or fit this into the maturity model, like how organizations are uh, you know, prepare and how how they're doing with, with each one of these steps in the ML life cycle, right? So the data mm -hmm. prep, feature store, training, model storage, and model serving, and then observability or monitoring of the infrastructure and also monitoring and observability of your machine learning models. Yep, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yes. The, the big thing we try to do with the maturity model um, though, is make sure it's a resource that points people to the resources you've created. So like, we don't want to ever replicate or attempt to replicate your work. We want to make sure we put it in the right spots. We put references in the right spots. And then we all, we direct people to obviously your resources that you're providing. So we'll, we'll like, we want to make sure it's in, we want to get AI included, but we, I just want to kind of call that out. We do not want to replicate your work because we are not the AI experts. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, and, and I, yeah, I think replicating the word doesn't doesn't <laughs> help uh, in, no. in the community. I think so. We want to work on different things, and I'd like to open it up to other folks on the call if they have any comments about this or any suggestions. 
So, uh, yeah, if I understand correctly, Daniela, this is, can you give me an example of something that you have done early, like a successful outcome from this group that applied to things other than AI, for example, so that I'm able to map? I'm, I'm going to go and read this because I haven't, I admit I haven't read it to, to length uh, before. <laughs> Um, so if you can give an example, maybe also for the folks in the call to understand. Yeah, sure. So, yeah. um, how we kind of first developed it and how it's been evolved over time is that we kind of looked at the key areas of cloud native overall and like the different technologies you're going to be using, the different policies you're going to be putting in place, process people and whatnot. And we kind of, it was a group of us that kind of said, well, what are the things and like, when would you do this? So you know, level one is all about, you're not experts at cloud native, but you've decided to go cloud native. So you have pre-prod happening, like you're testing things. You probably have some POCs happening with different technologies. Level two is like you move to production and what, what that looks like and what, you know, tools you need to put in place there. Likewise, you know, three is like, you've made decisions. Now you need to scale what's actually happening level four is you've you've made decisions but now you need to work on improving those decisions and then the fifth one is kind of okay we we need to adapt now cloud native is constantly changing we might have selected things we might have had a process in place that doesn't make sense anymore we adapt so that's just like a high level overview so what we what we did and as you go through it you can see the key themes around like there will be a people theme there's process policy but then within those we have like deeper like or further themes um, so most recently, we've been working with the platform working group on their maturity model and how we can incorporate their levels into ours so that we can map together and say, okay, if you are a leader and you're considering cloud native and need to fully understand what's happening, read this. But if you now need to go deeper and look at the platform model, this is how it maps to this model and how you can use it and go from there. So we would kind of want to do a similar sort of thing with this, with the AI working group where we say, you know, AI is being thrown in your face everywhere. Cloud native is super important um, part of the AI, um, you know, future. And so, you know, as you go through your AI adoption or investigations or whatnot, consider, you know, in level one, you're going to be considering these type of things. And in level two, you're going to be considering these type of things and likewise through it. But please go to their white paper to read the in-depth. So it's really just kind of high level throughout this model that we want to have. Okay. Let me, let me try to see if I understand. So we have, and again, I'm, I'm going to go read this. So how I understood this is that you're trying to standardize how working groups and maybe tags are defining maturity models uh, in a way so that when people are looking for guidance from the CNCF, they have a standard way of looking at how to build, operate, and scale the technologies within that bubble. Is that is that correct? It's not really standardization because like the platform working group came to us and said, we want to build a maturity model. Can you give us some advice? And we went, yeah, sure. This is how we went about doing it and whatnot. And so then they built theirs. We want. They, they built it on, you know, using different uh, definitions or different, different uh, uh, terminology or is it, this, does it follow yeah. also? So there's some, some, the overall structure is quite similar. However, um, it's for the the platform maturity model is focused around platform engineering specifically. So it has specific concerns around that. The level at which the cloud native maturity model is one step above that. So so um, it covers. Uh, um, we just get, we bring in the areas of policy and process, for example, a lot more, and we'd have less around technology. So if we, how, um, one way how we could, the way I, that we can see this is, for example, when, uh, when you're dealing with, with LLMs, how are we going to be, what are the things that you would want people to consider as they're starting out on that journey? For example, around placement, um, security, 
What are the policy concerns? What are the things that are really important as individuals and organizations are starting out working with AI that, that really early on they need to be considering? And that's a good example of the type of thing we would like to accurately reflect. If it's around uh, workload and scaling at, uh, for training, for example, there will be considerations that will often be quite different to, let's say, more um, traditional Kubernetes and cloud native platforms that have been, been implemented in a lot of organizations. And we're really keen to ensure that some of the things, uh, for example, around hardware, those types of considerations are brought out early uh, so that um, people don't make, in some respects, obvious mistakes early on. And then also as they progress, there are more subtleties that we can we can refer, again, refer back to you, but again, point out in a consistent manner. Does that help, Adele, answer your question? It, it helps that I, 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 I have a lot of questions and I probably come to your Slack and ask them. Um, it helps from the sense that I think you talked about the implementation. Uh, I'm, I'm interested in uh, if we abstract yeah. away what the cloud maturity model is about so that it applies across all working groups. So what are the gists um, that, you know, here, here, here is the interface that you're going to implement as a working group so that you're able to um, set the scene for whoever is reading and, mm -hmm. uh, and journeying and navigating the cloud native AI or cloud native platforms and so on. So this is, this is what I'm, the model that I'm trying to build and I'm, I, I haven't done my homework, so I, I'll stop and yeah. I think it makes sense to me. I mean, it's a high level uh, uh, place where, you know, folks in different organizations can go to and, and then the map out to like the different working groups. It, I mean, it doesn't map out to every single working group because some of the working groups are working on some very specific things, but maybe cloud native yes. AI and platform working group are, are, you know, good examples. So for mm -hmm. example, like how do you build AI or how do you build like um, a platform team or, or, or a platform, right? How you, yes. how you operate a platform? How do you operate AI within your organization? How do you scale AI? How do you scale a platform, right? Like how do you adapt a, um, a platform and, and, and AI? So that's how I see it, but yeah. 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 I really like the business outcome piece. I think, I think this is something that I haven't heard any, uh, working group talking much about uh, or, or how, how to communicate it. So I, I'm really liking the that piece. Uh, we, yeah, we... We, that is what we worked on most recently because, you know, obviously as an industry over the last year, there's been a lot of redundancies and a lot of budget cuts and whatnot. And we were like, if people can start communicating the business value of cloud native better, like this is a problem. So we've had a few sessions on it. We're speaking in New York next week about trying to translate cloud native tech into what it actually means to a business leader and how we can all get better at that language. Makes sense. Any other questions, comments, uh, doubts, anything that Okay, well, thank you. Thank you all for, for your time. Um, um, I'll join, uh, if I may, the um, AI Working Group Slack channel. So uh, I'll join that in a moment. And also um, I would, um, um, yeah, we're, we're really, we um, would love to to speak to you. Both Danielle and I are, are there, and we also have a another Slack channel. I'll add that into, into this meeting chat. Thank you. Yep. Sounds great. We love We'd love to collaborate. And we have a question from John on the Slack. It says, the majority models are kind of to get an idea of where you're at, the standard path that people came from for comparison and more of a standard path going forward, right? Um, yep. Yeah. yeah, we we see that as helping to helping people on, on that path, yes, um, to avoid obvious mistakes, think about considerations, 
steps for the for the for the journey forward um and um and the more input we get into that again more we can help to to standardize that as well exactly awesome thank you yeah thanks thanks for um helping out and collaborating uh, so the next item we have uh, on the agenda is Rajas. You want to talk about OPEA? Or... Yeah, so to give some context around the folks from OPEA, I can start an IP, Rama in the call. So Rama, over to you. Hey, hey folks. Yeah, I'm Rama Karam Sethi. I'm part of uh, Intel's uh, CNCF uh, contribution team here, um, primarily representing Arun and Rachel from uh, from from Intel, uh, we we wanted to have some time here today. Uh, we have a community day uh, that we are organizing. We pitched uh, uh, one slider last week to figure out if there's going to be interest from any of our partners or from any of our contributors here. Uh, basically, uh, as Intel, uh, we have started an initiative to to be able to create end to end LLM plus RAG solutions. Uh, in, uh, in and reduce the time to market overall uh, by bringing in contributors and collaborators from across uh, across the corporations. Okay, and in the process, uh, we've submitted uh, an open project into uh, CNCF uh, AI and data areas sandbox, and uh, that has been approved and. Yeah, we have launched the pro project and we have uh, collaborators and contributors coming on board. We have close to 23, uh, 23 partners that have signed up so far uh, and they're looking for more. So uh, if I, I can actually paste in the link to the community day as well as uh, opia.dev, uh, I would like everyone to at least take a, take a look and then See if uh, you'd be interested in collaborating, contributing, or even becoming a technical steering committee member uh, for the OPIA project. So we're looking for at least nine technical steering members, uh, Intel having one or two of them. And, and we want this to be more uh, a community-driven project rather than something that's uh, just Intel-driven. Yeah, I've just copied the link in there. I would also want to copy the link of uh, uh, the, the GitHub that we have created to show where we are at with respect to the OPIA project at this point of time. Uh, if we have, I, I believe, I mean, how much time do we have for this topic here, uh, folks, I just and others? Uh, uh, for the meeting? So, so yeah, so we're about uh, half uh, the time, so it's another 25 minutes okay. is, there, yeah. is there something if else that you'd like to minutes, i would like to yeah quickly walk through some of these slides uh, i have here Can sure you yeah them? that'd be great we have a couple of items on the agenda but so maybe like 10 minutes maybe so oh yeah sure 10 minutes will work too yeah i'm just new to zoom so please be patient with me guys yeah mm -hmm. and we are our teams people here at intel Right, uh, do you see my slide deck? Yep. Okay. All right. Uh, so basically, uh, the, the problem statement or the, the issue we were trying to resolve was that in, in the process uh, sorry, of building... We, we, we just see a blank screen now, so we don't see... Oh, you just see a blank screen? Yeah, like with a line in, in the middle. It was, it was not blank, yeah. Now there we, we go. Yeah. But now? Now, now we can see it. Yeah. Okay, give me one sec, please. I'm trying to just move this to my bigger monitor. Okay, I'll live with this here for now. Yeah, I don't want to yeah, figure out zoom in this call. All right, so so basically what we're trying to do here is um, we, 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 we have seen and we have had feedback from all of our partners uh, and end customers and enterprise customers that uh, building an end-to-end -end AI solution is obviously complex, right? And you have multiple different players coming in and contributing to the different areas of uh, of their expertise. But uh, being able to go in and build a complete end-to-end -end solution uh, has not been simple and easy. 
So at, uh, at Intel, uh, within our, our groups, we have figured out that there's uh, multiple different efforts trying to solve similar kind of issues, uh, but still not being able to come up with a complete end-to-end -end solution. So within Intel, we started this initiative to say that across all different divisions of and groups that work on AI, how do we consolidate all the effort to be able to come up with, uh, uh, let's say, a, a, a series of components that can help end-to-end -end reference flows. Okay, that is how the internal project was born. And then we realized, I mean, this is not just an Intel problem, and this is a problem across the ecosystem. So whether it is uh, an ISV trying to help you with uh, your data prep or creating vector databases, or whether it is an ODM trying to build complete end-to-end -end solution for on-prem or CSP uh, instances, right? So, so there's, uh, there's a need for someone to kind of standardize and help create these end-to-end -end LLM plus rack solutions. In the process, uh, we went in and defined what we call as open platform for enterprise AI. Basically, it is nothing but uh, uh, creating a process or ability to have configurable and composable components from across the ecosystem come in and contribute to have pre-validated end-to-end workflows. Okay, so we are not reinventing any of these uh, vector databases. We are not creating any new technical features, but we are only creating a process and ability to 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 collaborate and contribute and be able to create complete end-to-end -end solutions. In the first phase of it, uh, our spec we have defined it to be uh, very LLM plus rack centric. We are not looking at two D, three D image or video generation. We are not looking at CV or GNNs. Uh, in the first phase, we are purely focusing on LLM plus RAG because we feel these, uh, I mean, the RAG solutions are the, the easiest or low low hanging fruits. Okay, so for each of these components I show on this diagram here, right? Uh, we are going in as Intel and asking contributors and collaborators to come work with us to be able to have a size of option whether it is with agent frameworks or whether it is with your vector databases or with the, whether it is a choice of models or the way you serve your models, uh, we are offering uh, multiple different sizes that would be pre-validated, both on the open source end as well as some proprietary um, areas. Right? For example, Pinecone is a good example of a, a proprietary vector database. Um, we know that uh, it has a, a lot of adoption and uh, we we are working with them and we are saying, oh, what if we show that this this particular component can work in this end-to-end -end workflow? And by taking these components, right, we're going in and creating four repos, specifically on GitHub. So one focusing on component. And if there are a combination of components that make it better, let's say for the rack piece or the data prep piece or the LLM piece, right? We're also creating mega components so that whoever wants to use these don't have to start from scratch, okay? And then using these components, we're creating complete end-to-end -end AI examples. In, in the examples, we show uh, some pre-validated complete flows for chat Q&A, visual Q&A, audio Q&A, uh, data summarization, document summarization, code generation, code translation, search query Q&A, right? So if you go into the, the link I've uh, said for all of us on Zoom, right? Uh, you'll be seeing uh, the link to the GitHub and you'll see that when you go into the Gen examples area, you'll, you'll find these uh, available there already. On top of this, we plan to have some benchmarks. Uh, this, is, uh, this project is only three weeks old, very brand new. So we don't have much in the, in the GitHub yet, but over the next couple of weeks, we plan to include some benchmark evaluation. What happens if you combine, let's say, uh, one specific mixtral model with uh, three different vector databases? How does the performance change, right? That could be something that we'll be publishing. Or what if I take the same outcome or uh, same product that we want to develop, but for different models? How does the latency output, how does the uh, accuracy change? Uh, how, how, uh, or how does any other KPI change, right? Uh, or if someone comes and says, hey, I want to figure out if this particular model uh, can actually run for 2,000 concurrent users instead of just 20, right? So that those are the kind of things we plan to include into the Gen AI eval. And the last piece we have up there today is, uh, is how do you manage orchestrate? How do you 
uh, serve these models? How do you create these containers? How do you make these microservices available? Okay, so, so that is the fourth piece that we have here. So in, in this, right, in brief, that is, this is what we're trying to enable. And in the process, we are looking for, uh, for collaborators and partners. So we have worked, uh, over the last three weeks, we talked to close to 23 or 25 to 35 uh, folks uh, in, uh, in the ecosystem. Some vector databases, uh, companies raised their hands, uh, some uh, orchestration folks raised their hands, some end customers raised their hands and said, oh, this is really simple and easy, or, or you are making it look simple and easy, you want to collaborate, right? So so uh, on on the on the 14th and 15th of this month, though, we have what, what we're calling as the first community day. We're inviting everyone to come. And, and work with us, go through the breakout sessions, learn more about this and see if you want to be a collaborator, contributor, or even a, a technical steering committee member. So we are assuming we'll have nine seats. I believe we have uh, four to five of them kind of uh, verbally agreeing and, uh, and willing to be the technical steering members. Uh, and uh, eventually we want this to be uh, uh, an ecosystem driven project rather than Intel driven, we want everyone from the ecosystem all the way from uh, the vector database ISVs to an SI or GSI to be able to contribute, come on board and define and decide what happens in, let's say in the next roadmap or the next next iteration. Uh, so I also have a, a slide you know, that gives the, a little more detail on what does a technical steering committee member, I mean, what does he get? What does he give? Uh, what are we expecting? Uh, so, uh, all in all, uh, if you want to be a collaborator contributor, we would welcome. If you want to be a TSE member, we would like to have the conversation. Or if you just want to use what we have here in terms of complete end-to-end -end solutions and references, please, yeah, come come talk to us. Tell us what you might need or might not need, what your customers are looking for. Uh, uh, and uh, to begin with, all of this has been validated on uh, Intel plus Gaudi systems, but our goal is to be hardware agnostic. Uh, we are not limiting this software stack to work just on Intel plus Gaudi, but uh, across the ecosystem, whether it is AMD, NVIDIA, or any other players. So I'd like to stop there. Uh, I know you guys said it's 10 minutes, so any questions or any opens that I can address? If, if, yeah, I, if I can ask a question. Sure. Yeah. sure. Yeah, thanks. Okay. Uh, so uh, just just a quick question. I'm just wondering. You know, one of the things that you were mentioning was um, cloud native orchestration. So, mm -hmm. like, could you give an example of like what exactly OPR, uh, uh, you know, is doing with respect to to orchestration, or just any example would do just for for okay. me to understand. So yeah, let's let's take take this chat Q and A as an example, right? So basically, when I say cloud native orchestration, what mm -hmm. I mean to say is all the components in the containers and the microservices that we're building are being built so that they can be deployed, whether it is on-prem or in the cloud. Uh, every implementation and validation we're currently doing is on-prem though, okay? So, so we are showing this as an enterprise opportunity for end customers who are trying to build for the enterprise, right? So we're calling it open platform for enterprise AI. If the enterprises and end customers choose to build systems on-prem for security reasons or data reasons or any reasons, right? We would be more than glad to be able to show them a path for uh, just an on-prem system, but the same software stack can be pushed to a, a CSP instance and it works out of the box. And that is what I mean by, by being more cloud native. Yeah, so the, 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 the cloud native piece here uh, we are just about starting to define what goes into uh, the, the Kubernetes or Helm Cars or the scheduling. Uh, we don't have much, but Vijay, if you want to come in and contribute and collaborate here, right, we'd be we're welcoming you there. And by the way, I'm new to this forum here. I don't know who's who. Uh, if you can just tell me where you're from or who, what, what company or where you're representing, it would be helpful. So the notes uh, has the names and there are uh, affiliation, but also I think the introductions are are recorded usually every. So there, there's recordings for all the meetings. Um, yeah, feel free to join our Slack channel so 
so I think right before you joined, we had introductions and uh, we have meeting notes and, you know, you can just reach out to any of the members on the meeting notes. So you can also- Yeah, no, no worries, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, this is great. I think, uh, yeah, one of, one of the things uh, that I'm interested in is, I mean, we, we talk about cloud native scheduling and auto-scaling, but um, there's that aspect of running those specific AI components in cloud native such as you know land chain llama index or how, mm -hmm. how or like a vector database on on top of kubernetes uh so that's also an interesting area that we can also um, tackle or or if folks are interested they can, they can also provide some guidance on that because um, yeah. I, I mean you could actually run a vector database on a vm or you can run line chain also on a vm or some of these things are you know, API uh, calls to LLM providers like uh, Anthropic or OpenAI. So there's there's multiple different things. So and what we're trying to do is also how to make that aspect more cloud native. And yeah, I think uh, there's a lot of overlap and, and, and opportunities for us to work together. Oh, that'll be great, Carlo. Yeah, good to know. Rajas, did you yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I also had a couple of points to bring up over here. So uh, I think one was regarding, uh, okay, both of these points are regarding the goals of working group AI, uh, specifically on the reference architecture aspect. And Ricardo, I think you had also raised or uh, opened an issue in OPR on uh, the reference architecture bit, right? Um, I'll try to grab that as well. Uh, so the context around over here is as part of working group AI, we're trying to, uh, there were discussions on like maybe coming with a reference architecture uh, options and things like that and maybe OPR can help us do that so I'm just trying to bridge the gap between like how we can collaborate further and uh, the other one is to collaborate uh, further as CNCF yeah. itself like this or as independent uh, like, let's say uh, as Broadcom or as uh, any of these other individual independent companies here yeah. Uh, just just as as from the capacity of the working group oh, from okay. the CNC working okay. group. Uh, yeah and and the other one was as part of one of the goals of this working group was also or one of the ideas that we were talking about was to come up with a playground where people can play with uh yeah pipelines and models and things like that so maybe this can also be kind of sort of the platform where we can try out all of these things uh, so yeah, I just wanted to th throw both of these things. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, put it all together. That's the the goal to make it more more standard. So there there are also conversations about having something like Qflow in a box where maybe you can have all of these components in in a small Qflow uh, installation. So that f folks that are interested in learning, then they can actually you know spin that up very quickly and get started right away. Uh, well, I don't, good, yeah. I don't okay. have a rate your hand raised. Yeah, I, I was going to say, so uh, uh, Rama, so I here's my, my understanding. So PIA, or oh, I don't know how you pronounce it, but um, is focusing more on the intertwinings and the implementation of, let's say, LLM applications, whether these are rags or whatnot in the architecture, I think, this is good because we we actually don't opinionate much or you know want to opinionate much on how people are building uh, their mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. LLM or RAG architecture, but where we want to opinionate or or give guidance or reference uh, for folks, and this is something we've been discussing either through starting initiatives like building an LLM that can summarize CNF CNCF uh -huh. YouTube while building that, figuring out how to deploy it so that the 80% of the use cases know and have a reference of how to deploy, let's say on Kube or Kubernetes or how uh -huh. to deploy a cloud native tool. And so I think this is where we're opinionating and you're opinionating the other upper layer. And I, I feel like um, uh, we could be that layer. And, you know, there's probably a lot of chances for collaboration, whether it's, you know, you mentioned scheduling and so on. These are areas where we try to bridge the gap. I think this is, we don't opinionate on the LLM architecture. So I, I feel like this is, um, this is a good area where, as as Rogers mentioned, where we should potentially, you know, we, we can opinionate on the reference architecture for the cloud native deployment of OPIA standards. 
Right. Oh, that's good to know, Adele. I'll reach out to you uh, separately. Yeah. That's great. Any other comments from folks on the call? Yeah, so the quick comment on the sandbox or the playground that Rajesh was mentioning, right? So internally, we are also trying to create a sandbox and make it available here in the eval and benchmark area. In a couple of weeks, we might have it ready. And so it's as simple as uh, someone going in there asking a query and you go down below and pick a model of choice and then or pick a choice of models and say, hey, if I run the same query on five different models, Mr. Lama to uh, 7 billion, 70 billion, what does the uh, response look like and what does the performance KPS look like is is what we're trying to build internally as part of, uh, but that can be kind of uh, uh, extended out to make it a playground too for anyone who wants to come in and say, I'm not sure if I want to create an LLM solution yet, but I want to at least see how it works with my data or with my information, right? So, so we want to have that uh, as part of this project as well. Yeah, and I think this also fits into the ML lifecycle uh, model where you have, you know, all the steps, including observability and monitoring. So I think this this evaluation part fits into the observability space or evaluation. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, this is all. This is all good, I think. Uh, so yeah, one thing about performance, you know, you talk about the latency of the response time when an LLM does an inference. That's actually different from evaluating what the response is from the LLM or the machine learning model. But but they're all like things that are interesting or, or that that are, that are organizations uh, can find very useful. Um, I'd say also one interesting area is, so this is something I personally had problems with. I was evaluating an application I wrote, which is especially for a retrieval augmented generation, you have multiple pieces of the puzzle, right? And you could change any piece of the puzzle, which will impact the evaluation. And evaluation is not easy, it's costly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, how... and, yeah. so yeah. I, I, maybe I should rephrase that. Instead of calling it evaluation, right? Maybe you call it a comparison. Okay. okay. So what yeah. if I use one vector database versus another, one retrieval versus another? If I can just make a, a few permutation combination possibilities in the sandbox, right? And someone can just come in and run it and they can look at the comparison. Uh, I mean, yeah, maybe evaluation is, is a stronger term. Yeah. yeah. I, I feel like standardizing on that or at least providing some reference on how to do that was least cost because it's like super expensive to do evaluation and, and performance and comparisons. I, I know. Yeah, yeah. We, we, like, we face it at Intel owning the hardware here, right? And I can imagine how it is outside. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. We, we know the number of systems that we're asking. So the Gaudi systems we're trying to bring in, right? To, to, to run some of this. Yeah, it's never ending, right? So... Yeah, yeah, I do understand. Yeah, it can be very costly. And I mean, if yeah. you actually evaluate large prompts with very large responses uh, with LLMs, they can, or, or you're also evaluating images, for example, or videos can be super costly, right? So then, so. yes, 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 yeah. Oh, oh, that that reminds me. One of the examples that we're adding is uh, is a, a little tool for theft prevention for retail stores with cameras, right? So every 2.5 seconds, it just reads out the video and says, I see a person in a black shirt walking through the air. I see a person in a black shirt pick up an item and put it in the basket. Uh, or it could say, oh, I see someone potentially taking it and leaving it, leaving it in their pocket. Right? So, 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 so I mean, we just I mean, that's just a playground, though. I mean, just giving you a reference there as to one of the examples we have there. Great. So, okay, so we have six minutes. Any last minute questions? I don't know. We have just two items on the agenda. I don't know if we're going to get to those items, uh, but we can certainly talk on Slack. And uh, I, I just want to allow, because this is super interesting. So I want to allow other members to chime in if, if you have. I, I mean, some of the other folks on the call have been quiet. They have any opinions on how this could be useful? And Andre, do you have any takes on how this would work with something like Kubeflow, for example? 
I think it's interesting, Grandma. Like, I would love to, you know, learn more about like what, what exactly in terms of sandbox you want to offer. And you said like you initially want to be focused on LLM, right? And Rex. What is the, you know, the the plan for OP moving forward? Maybe just, you know, your roadmap. Um, yeah, sure, sure. yeah I, I can actually share all these slides uh, that I have here. Uh, I don't know where I should be moving them to. I'll probably need some help. But um, basically, uh, in the first phase, we are focusing on LLM plus RAG, Andre. Okay, so the left portion of this diagram here, uh, yep. up until maybe mid-June, uh, I think we'll be in, at a point where we'll have sufficient number of components that I'm listing here, uh, fully validated and available for people to start using. And in July time frame, we want to focus on the fine tuning part. Okay, so uh, and then after July, uh, what we would we'll be doing is we're going in and saying, "Hey, I have fine tuning, I have my LLM rack solutions, but my accuracy levels are not where it should be." Right? What if I can help build a multi-stage pipeline? Okay, the first stage is going to be an LLM interface where people can easily interact, but the deeper stage would be. Uh, you have uh, an expert kit uh, that is going to look at, let's say, uh, disease prediction or expert kit for, uh, let's say, anomaly detection or an expert kit for uh, CV or image-based, uh, right? So so that is one thing that we are looking at in, in the, let's say, longer term, maybe end of the year uh, kind of time frame. But overall, uh, having co contributors and collaborators kind of, solidify everything we're doing on LLM plus RAG is our first priority. But if you have certain areas that you think uh, you're seeing a, a lot more uh, influence from end customers or partners interest, right? Uh, we'd like to uh, get that feedback and see if we can change the roadmap based off of it. I think we fit into Go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say we fit into that category of orchestration and resource optimization, which you have on 2024 on your roadmap. So probably a good time to start collaborating. Okay. Yeah, we have started looking at it. Then we should definitely start collaborating. Yep. So should I set up separate time with you guys? Uh, or should we just come into the same forum and then... Have an open conversation. Yeah, what we do, uh, you could. So what we do is we have these four initiatives so far where there's a chance to meet. So I think you could come to the channel and, and maybe propose a meeting and see who wants to join, and then probably like start a meeting with the attendees. Like this is what we have done previously with uh, so other other things. So I guess you could do the same and, and see because I'm sure there's a lot of folks who would be interested in this and and then at least initially uh, have deeper discussions. You said there's a Slack channel, Sandra. Sorry, yeah, it's a it's is there a Slack channel that I could bring this to. Yeah, it's a Slack channel under the CNCF. It's called WG Artificial Intelligence. I can paste it on the chat here. Uh, okay. Rajas already posted. There's a link to uh, yeah. Oh, there. Oh, Rajas did okay. Ready? See. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Just. Uh, Propose uh, maybe working session. That's uh, another option. We have these meetings uh, twice a month, but we could have another working session meeting if there's some. I mean, want to go deeper into this and some okay. folks are, to get some folks interested in collaborating and, and working on you know deliverables or you know things that we can get out to the community. Sounds good, Ricardo. Yeah. All right, we got one minute left. Adol, do you want to talk about briefly? Yeah, I may, I'll, I'll I'll make it short. I'll probably post in Slack, but it's important. Um, so so far we we so we've been having a lot of att attendance leave recently, which is awesome. Um, that I was thinking, wanted to brainstorm how do you want to structure uh, the ideation. So I I if you look at the notes, I pointed to how currently you know we are tracking the things. Um, so ideally, uh, the, the proposal was. To, you know, if you have an idea or an initiative, you can bring it up to the to the working group notes, but then you can also file an issue, which is the recommended way, file an issue onto the runtime git hub repo. I'll put more details on Slack. And then that issue should have the CNAI label and should will show up on our backlog and our project tracking. So this way we're able to track 
what is happening where and people who want to contribute to something that exists are able to go to the GitHub and see who's working on those. And yeah, so this is this is a just a way to you know, I'm thinking of a way to formalize, you know, because we're getting a lot of intake. Uh, there's a lot of people joining and a lot of ideas flowing. Um, and potentially these ideas could, could be turned into something um, useful if properly tracked in in um, in Git using the right label. So have a look at the notes. I'm also going to post more details on the Slack. Yeah, but, but yeah, this is just a proposal. I mean, if you think uh, it's good or bad, um, it's just a proposal to track ideas. Yeah, I think it's great. That they'll, uh, are we planning to use the runtime GitHub, right? Tag runtime? Yeah, we've set up a project uh, on runtime GitHub. It, it's the link is on the notes. I'll put it uh, here as well, so you can go and already find uh, or things that we're working on uh, or people have been working on. Um, the, the tricky part is that you're not able to assign or you're not able to assign yourself unless you have interacted on the repo. So you know, reacting at least that's what what Ricardo has told me. <laughs> Uh, you need to have commented on the repo before, and so it gets tricky. But this is project where we're tracking. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you, so you these are comment on the issue. I think if you comment, you mention, or if you actually make a comment, something like here, then you can actually be assigned. So it's just, just one of like those yeah. uh, setups with the CNCF GitHub that we also followed up with them. But that's the only way that they have. It looks like so. Yeah, those are all things that have CNA, CNAI label. So anything that is and and have an issue. So if they have an issue in CNAI label, they will pop up onto this dashboard, and people will see who's working on what. And you can assign yourself or assign other folks here working with you on the same thing. Perfect. I don't. You want to briefly talk about the scheduling? Yeah, this is. I think I think we need a separate session for for to to to, to finalize this because I think I think um so. I saw which I merged a lot of comments. I think we need to to squeeze this in and 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 get all the reviews in, and then finally do a full iteration, and then and ship it in one way, shape, or form. Makes sense. Makes sense. So we'll continue the conversation on on Slack and and Rama. You know, regarding the OPEA, I mean, we can also use some of the, this board actually and create issues uh, to track different things. Like if if we you want to set up a working session, or there's some specific item that we can actually collaborate uh, we can also put it here oh okay sounds good sounds good all right yeah i'm i'm uh, new to all of this i'll i'll probably figure out how to do that yeah we'll do that card so so basically the collaboration piece is what i want to at least include in there uh, uh, yeah. and then yeah figuring out uh, so if it's the orchestration components that we start with that's okay um, but yeah, figuring out, let's say, technical steering committee members or anyone from here uh, willing to join the committee is also something that I'd like to look at. Yep, yep, that's great. All right, so we're... <laughs> so, so, Vijay, can I ask you a quick question on the scheduling, yeah. the scheduling white paper? So, Vijay, do we know, or Adele, when we're planning to finalize it? Like, we don't have any strict timeline yet, right? So, <laughs> so... Uh, I don't think we have a, so the last time we had the KubeCon as a KubeCon driven white paper, paper stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if we have decided Ricardo, like this, I, I think it, it is forming as a white paper so far, right? Versus a other content. Uh, so it is more going to be like a white paper versus a, a technical yeah. write up on the, on the website. Yeah, can we maybe, um send out a poll on Slack and get a sense of when they want to target this uh, deliverable. Uh, and, and we can we can work towards that, I think. Uh, I mean, something that, you know, could be, uh, you know, a driver could be AI, AI dev in a couple of months or a month from now. There's also- Open Source open Summit. Summit. Open Source Summit. So some, I mean, conference-driven development. Uh, some folks may not be a fan of that, but it's actually what's been happening. But and that's an option. So, so I think having a poll may be a, a good idea. You know, where, where folks like you know voice their opinion and go like, "Well, we can do this in a, in two months," and and for example, and then we work towards that. 
and there's no reason not to merge like the work or, or propose the work in its final form. So we, we, I think we should work to finalize it. The more we wait, the more it will take. Um, so if, if people have agency and want to continue and, you know, merge stuff that is recommended and then we That's can perfect, figure out. Perfectly, perfectly fine. Uh, but sometimes you just have to kind of set like a date, you know, to finalize yeah. a deliverable. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Let's see if I can add. I was like thinking of um, end of this month, um, but I'm not sure, you know, uh, considering the conferences and all that you mentioned, if that's appropriate or. Yeah, I mean, we, I, we'll, we'll, take, we'll take a poll. I think that um, I think that's. Yeah, let's follow up on Slack. I think it's a good yeah. idea. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. And see you next time. See you around. Thanks for joining. Good. All right. See you. Yeah. Bye.